in this sixth chapter of John's Gospel, often referred to as the Bread of Life chapter or the Bread of Life discourse, Jesus constantly refers to himself as the Bread of Life, which is wholly appropriate because of the fact that uh, it is a bread that sustains. Uh, it is a bread that lasts. It is a bread that nourishes both body and soul because it is that bread of life. He is the bread of life. And if we partake in this bread of life, we will never hunger. And if we believe in him, we will never thirst. And again, this is an allusion towards Eucharist. It's a very Eucharistic chapter uh, because of the fact that Jesus at the Last Supper uh, told his disciples, told us that uh, to take this bread, which is true food, to take this wine, uh, which is true drink, because it is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. It is the fullness of life found in Christ Jesus that in which we partake when we uh, engage in the Eucharist, when we uh, take the Eucharist into ourselves. And how can we not believe? How can we not uh, be raised up from our humanity into a sense of the eternal. For at this liturgy, at all liturgies, when we gather around the Eucharistic table, around the altar, uh, heaven and earth are joined together and we are raised up uh, from our common humanity into a sense of the divine, into a sense of the eternal. And uh, Jesus speaks of this eternal life in this uh, section of uh, the sixth chapter uh, when he says that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life and I shall raise him on the last day. Uh, and it is on that day, on the last day, uh, that we will experience that bodily resurrection uh, when our souls and our bodies will be joined together. Uh, just recently, I spoke of, in one of my in my Sunday homily, uh, I spoke of uh, this to a, to a degree uh, when I was having a conversation uh, years ago, as, as it is now, um, with a woman who was a resident at the local nursing home. And she asked me uh, about uh, this bodily resurrection and what our bodies will look like. And I told her I didn't know, but I did come up, I did, uh, in Googling it, um, I uh, saw this uh, theory posed by a theologian uh, that said we will have the same bodies we have when we turn 33. Um, and I thought that to be interesting, so I relayed that to her, and her eyes, her eyes lit up. And I said, oh, you seem excited about that. You seem happy about that. She said, oh, yeah, at 33, Father, I was a fox. I thought that was that I made this 90-year-old woman's day, uh, that she was, you know, looking forward to, you know, the last days, the resurrection, when she, her body would be reunited with her soul. But she certainly was more concerned about her soul, and I think that's where our, our, it doesn't matter what our bodies look like. But we have been promised a full resurrection in Christ Jesus. That's what our Easter season is about. That's what the Easter mystery is about, that sense of resurrection, that sense of new life. And John, in the book of Revelation, speaks of a new heaven and a new earth. And so uh, our uh, selves will take on a new form uh, in this new reality. And it is radically different than anything we can uh, have in this life, radically different than anything we can really ever imagine, uh, because the immensity of God, because of the, the grandeur, the greatness of God, uh, as what he has in store for us. And uh, when we partake in this Eucharist, uh, whether uh, personally or uh, virtually, uh, we join ourselves together as a body of Christ. We are joined together as a body of Christ. And we are one body in Christ with Christ as our head, and we all have uh, our part to play in that corporal body and that sense of the body of the church and the body of faith uh, to build up God's kingdom here on earth. Uh, 
and one day uh, live with him in the fullness of life in the kingdom. Uh, it is our uh, mandate, it is our call, uh, our baptismal call, uh, to build up the kingdom of God here on earth, uh, to recognize that our time here is not inconsequential, it is not accidental, but it is, is part and parcel of who we are, uh, this earthly life that we live. Uh, that's why we pray in the Our Father. We'll pray in a few minutes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is this earthly life that is a precursor to our heavenly existence. It is this earthly life in which we build up the kingdom of God here on earth. That is the church and that is the body of Christ uh, to live in the fullness of God's love one day in heaven. And so let us strive to be one with the Lord. Let us strive to come to the Lord uh, in fullness of hope, uh, in fullness of trust, in fullness of love. Uh, because when we come to uh, the Lord, we will never hunger. When we believe in him, we will never thirst. For his food, his, his body is real food, real and true food. His blood is real and true drink. And so let us not hunger or thirst, but let us trust that the Lord, uh, in delivering on his promise of resurrection and delivering on his promise of new life, may give to us uh, the fullness of life one day in God's kingdom.